for our subject matter, Lord, do it again. Now, people who stand in need of God to do something in your life, not that he hasn't done before, but something that he's done in the past, you just need him to do it again. Have you ever found yourself in the same jail? Any, any human beings out there made the same mistake? Any of y'all ever found yourself at the same crossroads, at the same dire straits, having the same doors closed in your face? Uh, now you fail, you've lapsed, you have messed up, and it's not like this is a new hurdle. You knew this hurdle was coming, you didn't jump it last year, and you didn't jump it this year. And now, now, now you find yourself in a place where you need God to do the same thing he did. Ooh. Lord, I need you to do it again. If you've done it for Moses, you will do it for me. If you open up the Red Sea for Moses, you will certainly open up the Jordan River, amen, for me. Many of us have mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers and forefathers, amen, that God, amen, has done the supernatural in their lives. And if you don't have a specific personal uh, reference, all I got to do is say one word, slavery. That ought to make us get up and get excited. Why? Because we have forefathers who were raped, who were destitute, who had no opportunity for education, who had no opportunity for employment, who had no opportunity for advancement. They were beat down. They were taken and stripped, taken from their country, taken away from their language, taken from their family and fragmented, emasculated and abused, and yet they made it. When I look into the White House, there is a black man in the White House. I'm trying to tell you, they made it. Oh my God, oh my God. They made it so much so that we can look, amen, at our own lives and say we are more blessed, amen, to God, or just we have just as much opportunity as anyone else in, in this country. Why? Because God did it for them, he can do it for us. Believe me, we do have some challenges in our lives, but they're, they're, they aren't anything like what our forefathers went through. If you hold your peace... He, he will fight your battle. I'm, I'm preaching this to anybody that's got any kind of fight on your hand uh, and you're trying to make a righteous call. You're trying to stand for God. You're trying to do it God's way. You're not trying to get all muddy and messy. You ain't trying to run nobody's name down. You ain't trying to put them on front street. Help me. You got dirt on them. They got dirt on you. They didn't expose your dirt. You tr you're trying to hold back. You're trying to, you're trying to not let them have it. They didn't told you off. You want to tell them off. They didn't did some thing that and said something and you trying your best let me tell you that God will fight your he will fight for you oh my God and ain't no beat down like a beat down from God God will beat them down so much he'll make them pay back what they took. He'll make them give you double for your trouble. He'll, pay, he'll make them apologize and repent in front of you. God will pay them back until you will be their boss where now they're your boss. He will pay them back in such a way he will take all of their stuff and because a lot of times uh, God has given us the world and we settle for the church. A lot of y'all want to be great in the church. You want to be successful in the church. You want to have prosperity in the church. In other words, you want to have a blessing that's measured by people that are around you, amen, that you're worshiping by, that you praise God with. But let me tell you something. There's a whole bigger scale. There's a bigger model. There's a, big, oh, there's a bigger standard. It's the whole world. I don't want church prosperity. I want world prosperity. Let me tell you, God will bless you. Let me tell you, his blessing is not limited to your job. His blessing is not limited to the streams of income that you already have. God can bless you out of nowhere. He's got one problem. He think he God. God don't need any mechanism, apparatus. He don't need any machine to bless you. He can bless you any way he want to bless you. At any time, he wants to bless you. And just when you think it's all over, Lord, <laughs> do it again, do it again, do it again. He will give you Whatever you're going through, if he's done it before, he can do it again. 
I'll only give you this if you're going through something that nobody has ever gone through before. If you're dealing with a devil that has never been dealt with before. If you're in a situation that nobody has ever had to face. I don't have good news for you. But if you are a human being, if you're anything like Adam, and you got kicked out of your Gethsemane, if you got kicked out of your Garden of Eden, there's hope for you. If you like David, and just one look was all it took, there's hope for you. If you like Samson, and you got your hair cut up in the devil's barber shop, there's hope for you. If you like Daniel and you put in the lion's den, there's hope for you. If you like the Hebrew boys and you're in a fiery furnace, there's hope for you. If you like David and you make your bed in hell, there's hope for you. If you like Jonah and you're going the wrong way, there's hope for you. If you're sick in your body and the doctors can't help, there's hope for you. If you bust it and broke it in the Ten Commandments, there's hope for you. If your marriage is higgly pegly and topsy turvy, there's hope for you. If you're down and can't see your way, there's hope for you. If you got a crack devil, an alcohol devil, a sex devil, a pornography devil, a lying devil, a debt devil, a money devil, is hope for you. So say yeah. So say yeah. Put your back up against the wall and say, Lord, do it again. Do it again.